Welcome to another little episode of our exploration. This is our new Facebook group, and I'm doing this with Jessica Sanders and Lisa Hetrick. And our group is growing, so come on over, join us over there. We do a color challenge every month. And for the month of July, we're back to reds, but this time we're going to be doing a ruby red. Hey everyone, it's Kelly here. So I'm working with some mineral paper today, a really tiny little piece. You can see it's very thin. And if you're not familiar with mineral paper, it's made from rocks. And I stumbled upon this when I was looking for Yupo paper one time. And Yupo paper is a little bit thicker. And but this has a smooth finish. It's real soft, almost velvety. Um, but it's not made with plastics. So it's another option for us, for those of us that uh, want to use something a little bit more natural. Now it is thinner, so it's uh, a little bit more challenging to paint on, but it works. It does the job, and if it does buckle on you at first, it will flatten out usually. <laughs> I say usually. So I'm just working on a, a, this is an envelope in a plastic, clear plastic sleeve, and I have my resin top table here. So if I get alcohol ink on, I usually can wipe it right off, but so I don't have to do that. I'm just going to work on this little piece of plastic on here so I can wipe that off with alcohol if I get any on there and then I'm also using my little custom made uh, ACO size mats for this so you can see that the mineral paper will fit right on there almost perfect so it's a little bit larger than the cutout so I'm not going to tape this down today but what I want to show you is, because our color challenge for our exploration group is the color red this month, for the month of July. And I'm going to be using some Shiraz Red, and this is from the T-Rex Alcohol Inks. And I'm also going to use their clear blending solution that comes in their little kit. And also I'll be using a little bit of the Space Black in there. So just really two colors, and I'm going to try to recreate a painting that I had done many years ago. We'll see if this will actually work. <laughs> but I call it Fire in the Sky because it's just basically reds and a little bit of black. So it's a really simple one to do. So I'm going to start out with the Syrah Red. And I'm going to put this here and here. You can see what a beautiful color this is. A little bit on there. Put the top back on. I forgot my gloves again. I'm horrible when I go to do these things off the cuff. And I'm like, oh, I should just videotape. I'm going to do something. <laughs> oh, so I'm going to try not to get my hands in here. I do have my fan and my windows open. So, so you can see that the, the uh, blending solution really lightens that up. So I'm just going to spread this around. It looks like I might have... Oh, Look at that. I always have some color on my brush. It never fails. Because I'm always dipping into other things. So, let's see if we can get this rocking and rolling here a little bit. Spread this out a little bit. I'm just spreading it across the page. I just want to get this nice and wet. And you'll notice I've tilted this sideways. I like to paint things <laughs> from an angle. <laughs> I don't know why. So it's moving a little bit. I want to get this before it starts to dry. So I'm going to put a little bit of that black on here and pick that up with the tip of my brush. And this is what I call my wet and wet technique for alcohol inks. And you can see when I touch that wet red, it just gives this beautiful bloom. A lot of movement in this. And you can see a lot of that is happening right in through here. So that's like almost immediate islands to me. If I'm looking in the sky and I'm looking at, you know, especially here in Maine, if you look across the water, this is what it looks like. So especially at sunset. So then I'm going to just take this again while this is still wet. I'm just going to give this little flicker of motion and I'm going to bring it down here as well. Try to mirror those as best as I can. And again, you can see how it's creating that blooming effect in there. And I've got a lot of ink on my brush. 
if I let that just dry just a little bit, I'm still getting all of that movement and it just is that illusion of some really tall trees in here. Crossed either the ocean or across the lake. And again, you have to do this quick. This is a great way to warm up with alcohol inks. And I'm just getting some movement in here. I don't want this it's starting to dry now. I've got the fan going on overhead and I don't want that to happen. So I have to move quickly. And again, just to look, look a little tapping motion in here. Not a whole lot of exactness. So see how that's starting to dry now already? Get some taller ones in here. So that's it. How fast is that? Quick and easy. Maybe I can add just a little bit of ripples in the water here so we have some movement. Drag my brush through some of this. We've already got going on. And there, I think I'm done. What is this little white thing here? I'll cover that up. I missed a spot. So there is like the fastest warm up painting that you can possibly do. I'm going to let this dry for a second. My brush aside over here. And you can see how fast, again, alcohol ink just dries so quick. It still has a little bit of movement in there. It's still a little bit wet. And you can see when I first put that on here, the blending solution tend to lighten that up a little bit with that red, but um, it just, it, evidently this stuff, and I don't know if this is the same with the uh, T-Rex inks, but I'm looking to see if it says anywhere on here. It doesn't really tell you, and it didn't tell you what blending solution was made out of. It didn't tell you what, um, for Ranger inks, uh, the Pinata has cleanup solution and another solution. Evidently a Ranger, I was watching a Tim Holtz live demo on Facebook, and I've heard other people mention it before, but they said that there's resin in the actual blending solution. And that's why it's um, important, especially with using the metallics and things like that for Ranger, because it's, the resin will set that pigment in there. So especially if it's got stuff that um, releases, like in my class I did with the shell painting, I don't know if you saw that, the shell painting, I used some of the iridescent powders by Jacquard. And so I would always spray it with a Kmart varnish, but the resin in the blending solution supposedly sets that. So I'm not sure if it's not exactly the same resin, like art resin, things like that, that we use today, but it definitely has some type of sealant in it. And um, so that's why, you know, it won't come off on your hands if you're using the blending solution. Different than if you're using alcohol, because alcohol does not seal it at all. It just lightens everything up. So I'm going to peel this off of here. Ooh, that's still wet on the back side. Let's see. We look at the color. <laughs> look at that gorgeous shade of red. Isn't that beautiful? It's like a pinky, pinky shade. It's just really, really pretty. So I'm going to let th that dry and then I'm going to come back, give it a few minutes and we'll, we'll matte this so you can see what it looks like. All right. So as I let that dry, I just want to show you here. I have got some on my table. So this is my resin table. So I've got some alcohol on here and I'm just going to clean that right up. So see how easy that is? That's why I love my resin table. If you guys uh, haven't seen the video on that, you can check it out. Um, I put it up on YouTube when I created this one. So and then another thing I want to mention, I do this a lot too. When I'm using these little plastic sleeves of the envelopes, I like to put the little white envelope in here and that way you can see my colors on here. But you can actually use this as a way to reactivate and use it as a paint palette, a really inexpensive way to, to do these over and over again. So you can add a little bit of the blending solution on here and you can see how it reactivates. And I can use that to then go ahead and paint something else if I want to. Um, one of my students asked me the other day if 
uh, alcohol inks had an expiration date. So I actually, in the live chat that they did with Tim Holtz, I actually asked him that um, if it did have an expiration date, and it does not. They said they do not have an expiration date, which I figured it's just dye. So once the alcohol dries, you're left with the dye behind it. And so that's what, you know, this is, is the dye. So all you need to do is do cleanup solution or alcohol. If you want to have out, if you want to use alcohol and alcohol will reactivate any of those dry pigments. So it's just similar to watercolor that way. So you have your watercolor pigments, you add water to them, it reactivates them. If you have those two paints, you squirt them in the tube, you let them dry, add water to it, it reactivates it. So that's the same thing with your alcohol ink. So if you have little palettes, don't throw them away. Keep this. You can always use this uh, and you know, pick up the color and then go ahead and paint with it again later on. Same with the black. Again, I have a little bit of the alcohol on my brush, so I can pick that back up. And this is completely dry, so if I touch this again, completely dry. So you can easily take um, take this with you if you wanted to go out somewhere and paint. Just bring a little, you know, little jug of alcohol or even a watercolor brush with some alcohol in it and use that to take with you. So really, really fun and simple. All right, so it's all dry. I'm going to actually use some layering solution. This is by Kelty. And I'm going to put that right on with my finger. Now this doesn't take much at all. So that's going to seal that alcohol ink so it's not going to reactivate now. So it sets it. That way you don't have to worry about if you know you accidentally spill something on it. A lot of times though if I'm just doing regular alcohol inks and putting it behind UV glass I don't even worry about that. Which is how I recommend people um, do their alcohol inks is behind UV glass. So I'm just going to take my heat gun and just going to dry that layering solution on there. And I don't want to get it too hot. Okay, so I have my little mats and our backer, backer board and my mat. And I get these from Golden State Art. They actually have um, some larger sizes on Amazon as well, but these ones have to be specialty cut. And they also come with a little plastic sleeve that you can slide your artwork into afterward. So I have my piece. I've gone ahead and used my Kilty layering solution to seal that. And then I'm going to probably sign my work. So you can sign it here. And you can sign it on the back. Because this one is so small. I think I'm going to, because it's so small, I'm going to leave my initials off of that. I think I'm going to sign it just on the back here. 2020. July Kelly Chassis Fire in the Sky. That's what I'm going to call it. So now I'm going to get my backer board and place that on there. And I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and sign the mat as well. So I like to get it set up to where I want to have it. You've got a little bit of adjustment here that you can make. I'm going to bring it over this way a little bit right there. And then I'm turning it upside down. Okay, so I have some double-sided sticky tape that I like to use. I'm going to get just a small piece off here. And apply that to the top portion. And then I can just peel that off. You can let, allow it to float in the frame this way a little bit. 
and that way um, it will tend to ripple if it gets too tight and you put it behind glass or you put it in your mat you get the little ripple it will give it room to move out if it needs to and then I'm going to put it right to the back here and then just push down and that way I can I still have a little seal so I can get underneath there if I need to okay so I'm going to go ahead and fire in the sky and sign it and that's ready to go so there you guys go there's my art exploration for this week i hope you enjoyed it and remember explore see what your what your materials are going to do for you i'd love to hear your results if you try things and i know all three of us can't wait to see your projects so please go ahead and post them in our facebook group and don't forget to check out lisa and jessica's art exploration this week all right guys that's it click that like button if you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys next time Bye bye